Hello again, everybody. This is Comic Book Hangover. It is Thursday. It means it's time for another one of my weekly haul, weekly review videos. Uh, before I go any further, I'd uh, just like to you know kind of get this out of the way. If you're liking my videos, all my new subscribers, I know I've, I've had uh, a couple in the past month or so, which is really awesome. I appreciate the support. Uh, but if you're you know if you're a subscriber, go ahead and please like this video. If you're not subscribe hit that notification button and click that like button i mean it doesn't take too long to do it and i would really really greatly appreciate it and as far as subscribing goes you could also hit that notification button so you know when i have a new video coming out for example tomorrow which is fridays i, I do these every thursday i will be doing my last full run friday for the month of october the last sort of halloween horror one and it's going to be my nightmare on elm street slash freddy krueger comics um, again, it's, there's, there's not a whole lot to talk about some great covers, some not so great covers, but that'll be going live, uh, tomorrow, two, three o'clock or so. Uh, but yeah, subscribe, slap that notification button and you'll know ahead of time when those videos are coming out. Uh, so that aside, let's go ahead and get started with first, let's talk about some of the books that I picked up last week, beginning with, because this is in no particular order at all beyond the breach number four. Now, I know I said last week that this is going to be my make or break issue for Beyond the Breach. And I'm going to stick with it because apparently it's just a five issue miniseries. Now, this is something that uh, a lot of publishers don't do that I really, really wish they would is if they have a miniseries, put that it's a miniseries on there. So there's a five issue mini. So it should be on the cover for and real small print, doesn't have to be spectacular or anything, of five. So we know, you know, if we're in this for the long haul, if this is a finite series or what. Um, on the flip side of that, I also never understood why publishers like Marvel and DC will put out a one shot and put a number one on the cover. It's like there's only going to be the one. So just put one shot or just don't put any numbers on it at all and be done with it because it's it confuses some people. I mean, sometimes it confuses me, especially if there's a one shot that would be a series that I would really like. And then I find out it's just a one shot. It's just kind of annoying because I know like Marvel in particular, a lot of times they don't really make it known that it's a one shot. If you get look closely at the solicit, sometimes towards the, the price, it'll say one shot. But usually, you know, you have to guess. But anyway, that aside, it's only a five issue miniseries. So this one here, we kind of get a backstory about what the breach is and where it came from. So the guy that we thought was trying to stop it is actually the guy who started the whole thing. And he had reason to uh, these these. Uh, people who are after him actually created the breach and they they have this technology that allows them to go from you know reality to reality apparently and they, they just go there and they conquer everything and they take all the resources and they kill all the people they're just they're jerks essentially and they ended up in this guy's uh, reality uh, it's, it's actually this dude right here i can't remember his name but they ended up in his reality and he was him and his people they were simple farmers and they were you know they were conquered and forced to give most of their food and most of their, their goods to these conquerors. And he decided he'd had enough and had hoped that if he stood up and showed that you can take a stand against these people, that others like others would join him and there'd be a revolution. They could put a stop to it, but it didn't quite go as plan according to the plan. So he wound up stealing one of their uh, devices and ended up going through different realities, kind of trying to get away from them. And what had happened and why all these creatures ended up in uh, California or, or on the West Coast is as he was going through a sort of like sort of like a boat going through water. You know, it, it leaves ripples in the wake and things get sucked up in that wake. And as he was going from reality to reality, creatures and and you know bugs or whatever were being sucked up in that wake. So they were kind of following him. And as he went through different realities more and more, and then and when he ended up on Earth in our dimension, in our reality. And since that was the end, all these things just kind of crash landed on Earth. And unfortunately, there's no way to get back. And even more unfortunate is our climate, our air is, is poisonous to some of these beings. So some of them are dying. Uh, most of them are confused. I'm sure a lot of them are, and all of them are probably scared and just wondering what the hell's going on. But this is this is a really interesting miniseries. Now that I know it's a miniseries, like I said, I'm going to stick with it. Check out the fifth and final issue that'll be out next month. It's a fun read. I mean, there's really not a whole lot that I can really compare it to. So it's it's not like it, I can't really say if you like these kind of stories, check this out. But if you're wanting something that it is really different, and you know, it's from Aftershock, 
Aftershock has been putting out a lot of really interesting books lately. And I'm really starting to get into them big time. Uh, I think uh, next week, I think it's Aftershock next week has a whole slew of number one issues uh, that are supposed to be out. Uh, there's a chance that some of them may not be released because here in the United States, we are in the midst of a paper shortage because apparently paper doesn't grow on trees. But we got a paper shortage, which means that some books are being delayed. And, um, you know, Marvel and DC and some of the other publishers, Dynamite uh, in particular, apparently don't understand that, hey, maybe if we cut back on some of these variant covers, we'll have extra paper that we can put towards other comic books and get more product out. Who, I mean, to me, it makes sense to cut back on variant covers, but you know, whatever. What do I know? Uh, but Beyond the Breach, five issue miniseries, very different, something that was a nice sort of break from the norm. I'm really enjoying it. And this issue, like I said, with, with, with issue three, it was just kind of a eh, issue, but this one really picks it up. And I know it's because we're, we're on that down, downward slope to the grand finale. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works out. So next book, Batman vs. Big Man. I'm a huge Fables fan. I know I've said that numerous times on here. So when I heard this was coming out, we got six issues for this. And then when this is wrapped up, we got 12 more issues of Fables. And I cannot wait. But Batman vs. Big B. So here we actually get some more interaction between Batman and Bigby. And that is really cool. Um, the one thing in particular is Batman finds out how truly powerful Bigby is. Uh, starting off with having uh, captured Bigby and kept him in a cell in the back cave. Bigby didn't like it. As he says in there, he doesn't like to be confined. So in this story, the bat cave is completely destroyed because of Bigby. You know, he is the big bad wolf. He'll huff and he'll puff and he'll blow anything down. And that's exactly what he did. So now we've got... Uh, Big B trying to find this book. Not really sure what the book does, but he's trying to get this book and take it back to Fable Town. Batman is trying to figure out, you know, where all these, you know, all these um, murders are happening. Big B doesn't care about the murders; he just wants the book. But also, for Fables fans, if you're not checking this out, there is another fable in this book. He talks to somebody, and it's Cinderella, and I was so excited to see her again. She is one of my favorite characters from Fables. I mean, she is such a kick-ass character. I, I, it was exciting. And then it got me to think, it's like, well, if we got Batman versus Bigby, I mean, I would love to see, you know, Cindy take on, you know, Batgirl or any number of the Robins. That would be awesome. Or hell, even, even take on Batman himself. I know she could outdo Batman. She could definitely outdo Batman. But Fables fans... If you're not checking this book out, you got to check this book out because it is so much fun. It's great seeing Big B. He is out of his element. He's in Gotham, and it does show a little bit that he is out of his element. You can kind of get the impression that, you know, he doesn't, he knows how the Monday world works, and he knows that he has to sort of keep his true nature hidden to an extent. But there's also this this unease that he is very far from Fable Town, and you know, just it's just him and apparently just Cindy, and they're they're trying desperately to get this book because my my thinking is is if people find out about this book, then people are going to find out about Fable Town, and everything goes pear shaped from there. But this is a great book. Uh, I mean, the covers the covers are great. I'm getting both the uh, the main cover and the variant covers for him. Uh, Bill Williams doing a great job. I love the way he writes Batman. If he was to get a Batman miniseries, I would definitely be on board for it. I really like the way he writes Batman. But anyway, uh, Batman versus Bigby. Another great book. Another amazing read. Next book is going to be Refrigerator Full of Heads. I got to get used to saying that because I'm used to the original miniseries. It was a um, basket full of heads. It was originally a six-issue miniseries, and and I for whatever reason, I'm glad they did it. They added the seventh issue. But if you're a fan of Basket Full of Heads, you're going to want to definitely check out Refrigerator Full of Heads. It picks up after the events of Basket. Uh, we don't really see any direct... Um, Appear, there's no direct appearances of any of the characters. There's references to stuff that happened and during the beginning when they're doing sort of the, uh, the opening monologue. But the battle axe... This bad boy right here, the battle axe, is right where we, right where it was left at the end of basket full of heads, and there's people that are looking for us. There's people that know about it. So there's this big there's a there's a big conspiracy, uh, sort of a shadow organization that's trying to get a hold of this thing. There is a married couple, supposedly a married couple. I'm not sure, but we're gonna find out over the course of the series. But we're gonna say supposedly a married couple on vacation. They know about it somehow. 
Um, you know, I mean, they find something that's glowing, you know, in the water. And, you know, I think they're, they, it's almost like they kind of know what it is, but they kind of don't, I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird, but it's, it's just as interesting. It's just as fun. And there is one of the heads does show up. It does pop up, uh, from the, the previous mini series. I don't know who it is. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's, um, uh, it, it's great. I mean, if you enjoyed basketball of heads, definitely, definitely jump on board for this one. It's a lot of fun. I believe this is going to be another six issue mini series. I'm not sure. I hope so. Uh, there's some good variant covers to it, but I'm just going to be getting the, the main covers. I think I got mostly main covers for the first mini series, so I'm just going to continue that because you know I'm I am seriously trying to cut back on getting all these variant covers unless they're for books that I, I'm really really into. So the last book from last week I want to talk about is the Death of Doctor Strange number two. It's interesting. Basically, all I want to say about this one is 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 I'm going to be going through this whole Death of Doctor Strange thing, but I'm not getting any of the tie-ins except for one. I'm going to get the Bloodstone tie-in that comes out in January because I'm a big fan of Elsa Bloodstone. I love her. I got her miniseries, and you know the one book that she was in that nobody seems to talk about is Next Wave. I don't understand why because that was an amazing book, but it's it's cool. You know, we got the Doctor Strange from the '60s coming back, and and you know he's. It is, it's funny because when when he was sort of put in this this pocket reality or whatever, sort of like a failsafe for, for Doctor Strange, he wasn't privy to all the changes in the Marvel Universe since then. So he's still old school. And um, it, so his his interactions with characters who have known him for, you know, over the decades, now not now interacting with a version of Doctor Strange who doesn't know their friendship, it doesn't know their trials and tribulations. This guy didn't go through the Infinity Trilogy. You know, he didn't go through any of the secret wars. He didn't go through any of that stuff. So it's, it's kind of cool to see that and see that sort of outsider perspective on things. But it's a fun series. Um, fortunately, they're not really introducing a whole lot of... Well, to me, they're not introducing a whole lot of new characters. We got Baron Mordo. We got Wong. Um, I'm not sure what happened with Rintra. I think he got killed at some point. But you know, we, there's a lot of familiar characters. So if you're like me and you're not really following the Marvel Universe anymore and comics because it is wildly unrecognizable these days um you know that's that's a good book to get because you to me it seems like you don't even really need to know what is going on in the marvel universe now to fully understand what's going on in this book it seems pretty self-contained and i kind of like that so those are all the books that i picked up last week that i wanted to talk about and again and, and before i jump into this week's haul which is you know, small haul but you know whatever uh again a reminder click that like button notifications when you hit that subscription button you'll find out when i got new videos coming out like i said i got one coming out tomorrow it's gonna be my nightmare on elm street haul for full run friday uh so like comment subscribe notification button share the videos all that fun stuff so that aside let's jump into the books that i got this week again in no particular order but we're going to start off with to me which was the biggest book of the of the week the biggest release of the week house of slaughter number one um big fan of something is killing the children very much looking forward to this book. So, you know, I, I kind of flipped through it a little bit, but not too much because I didn't want to get any spoilers before I actually had a chance to read it. I still haven't had a chance to read it. I'm going to hopefully be able to do that later today. But I got um, uh, House of Slaughter number one. I got the regular cover. I did get the foil, um, the foil variant cover. I'm not sure how well that is going to translate on the video, but take my word for it. This is sort of the, the foil variant. And then I got this variant as well. Uh, the next one I grabbed was Robin number seven, which made me think I got Robin number six. I don't think I read Robin number six, which once a book reaches that point where I don't read an issue and the next one comes out, that's usually a sign that I'm not as interested in it as I thought I was. So I might be dropping this one pretty soon. Um, we'll see. I'm going to read six and seven, see how I feel about them, but it looks like I might be might be dropping that series uh the next one this one actually it came out last week i guess and i kind of missed it uh hell cop number one um i think this is an ongoing series i don't know the solicit sounded pretty cool this is there's many many covers for this one but this is one that i really liked so i grabbed that one finally and last and certainly not least from vault comics human remains number two first issue i got the variant cover as you saw what in the last last week or the week before video I uh, got the variant cover as part, I wanted as, as a part of the raffle that my LCS does every week. So I, I got a chance to read it. Very interesting story about aliens coming to Earth and just sort of attacking anybody who expresses any strong emotions or feelings. Sounds like an interesting idea. I'm really curious after reading the first issue. Really curious as to how they're going to 
um, expand that as a story. You know, it seems like humans by nature are very emotional creatures. So how are we going to be able to have a story where humans are, you know, not expressing that emotion? Um, in the first issue, there was a group of people, military people and scientists that were meeting in a room that, you know, apparently were fully protected from the outside so they could express their emotions to an extent and not get attacked by these these aliens. So I'm going to check out the second issue and see where that goes. If it's if it's anywhere near as good as the first issue, I may end up, I'm, I'm just going to, I'll stick with it uh, either until it ends. I'm not sure if it's a miniseries because again, they don't put it on the cover if it's, if it's a miniseries. I can't imagine a story like that would be a, uh, an ongoing. I mean, the concept seems very finite to me. But you never know. I mean, if if you got a writer and, and the writer in this one does it did a really good job in the first one, they may be able to stretch it out to an ongoing series. We never know. I'm gonna read the second issue, see how that works. If if I like it, I'll pick up the first issue and I'll just stick with it until I lose interest in it. I guess I don't know. But anyway, that's it. We're gonna wrap this up. Thanks again for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoy. You know, again, what I am doing here week in and week out. I'm having a blast producing these videos, such as it is. You know, it's really not a whole lot of production value to these. You know, it's kind of kind of bargain basement, but you know what? We, we do what we can do. You know what I mean? So thanks again for watching. If you're enjoying my videos, if you're a subscriber, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and uh, uh, comment down below. Let me know, you know, if you're reading any of these books, what your interests are, what you're, you know, what you're curious about, what your feelings on like House of Slaughter. I know there's, there's a, there's a little bit of controversy about House, House of Slaughter, about one of the, about the main character in there. You know, I, I honestly, as, as long as, as long as the story is good and it doesn't take a back seat to other things, I don't care. I want a good story. I want great characters and I want good art. And I know uh, James Tinian the Fourth. He's a good writer, so I'll, I pretty much guarantee that's going to have a, a you know a good story. The artist, I think they brought in the artist from House of, uh, uh, from Something Is Killing the Children. So that right there guarantees the book is going to have an amazing art. Uh, that the art on Something Is Killing the Children is some of the some of my favorite art in comic books right now, but. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to check that out. But, um, you know, if, if you're, you know, got any questions or comments about that book, you know, comment down below. But it, that's it. We're going to wrap this up. So, again, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, tune in tomorrow for my final Halloween edition of Full Run Friday. Again, it's going to be my Nightmare on Elm Street comics. And I'll see everybody next week. Um, I might be taking a break from the mini Mondays. I'm, uh, I, I kind of like the idea of doing themes for a month. Um, I just got to figure out what the next theme is. I have an idea, but you know, I'm, I'm going to work around, work around some stuff and see what I can do. But anyway, see everybody tomorrow, full run Friday night, on Elm street. And again, at very at the very least next week, another weekly haul, weekly review video, everybody have a good night.